Good afternoon, traders. It's Bill Baruch with Blue Line Futures. It is your daily midday market minute. We have a deluge of data in focus, but before I get to it, if you're watching this on YouTube, please click the link below and subscribe. Like and subscribe. If you're watching from our website, there's also a link below to direct you to YouTube, and you can subscribe that way. We'd love you to follow us. We'd love for you to help us build our following. Yes, there's a deluge of data tonight coming from China, but first, let's talk about the S&P. We have another range-bound session on our hands. The S&P kind of just waffling between that 4138 41.43 pivot point of balance area. While it's below there, the bears are really going to try and push this a bit. And then while it's above there, I think the bulls are getting excited. You might be able to get a potential breakout. Now on Friday, we did trade into major three-star support. We respond. We saw the market respond against that. And we settle right back in the middle of the range. Again, very range bound market, but the NASDAQ's a bit different. It's trying to levitate. We're back above 13,400. And what we really need to see is we need to see a, a breakout session. We've been getting these slight higher closes, which is great. And you have the highest close on Friday since August. And that's a great thing to see. But we need a day that's really going to push the market higher. If this leadership is going to be there, sort of it's, it's you're getting this rotation between who's leading. And, you know, the semis have done really good. And you have Alphabet that did terrific last week. You have Micron showing up today and some of the other semis that have it in recent days. But you need to see this day where the tech, if tech's going to be the leader, it's going to have to drag the rest of the market out of it. The Dow's been down. People are talking about it multiple sessions in a row, eight out of last nine or something of the sort. But this is something where you go back to 2011 and July of 2011, very similar activity in the Dow ahead of the debt ceiling. That was August 2nd of 2011. So there's a, definitely a parallel here. Will they get something done? It's definitely been, been a headwind uh, to some of the cyclical names. So tech has got to show up. I mean, I, I closed above 13,500. That may be enough of a stretch, stretching away from that 13,390 close on Friday to really get some something going here. Um, but again, you have the S&P pivot point balance area, right? That 41. 40. Yeah, you, it's range bound some responses against support, but the, but the overhead resistance were not able to chew, chew out above there. All the levels of the morning express, so check it out. And, and here, one of the things you saw the market turn lower early on, probably in a reaction to New York Empire State Manufacturing, came in at negative 31.8. This is the worst one since January, which is, I think, it was negative 32 and change. And that's the worst since going back uh, to the pandemic fallout in, in the spring of 2020. So these are really bad numbers here. Uh, but again, it, it continues to be lumpy and lopsided where some hard data is good and some hard data is bad. New York Empire State Manufacturing one month is great, then it loses it all, all the next month. So very lumpy data. And that just speaks to where we are and, the, and where the uncertainty lies within recession. Now, I, I, if you've been reading my stuff, if you've been reading the Morning Express, I do believe we're heading in for a soft landing. Uh, but but the data around the globe is, is definitely in question. And that's you know, look, looking at China tonight. You go, go back to next last week, you have PPI and CPI data showing disinflation, new loans data last Last week as well uh, deteriorated and then that's where we had the big fallout and some of the metals you had copper and silver really sharply lower crude oil started eroding its gains on the week as well uh, in that run from the prior week so tonight though you got a big deluge of data from china at 9 p.m central time industrial production it's expected at 10.9 percent this would be the biggest jump going back to uh, to really when 2011 when when that was the last time we saw year-over-year -year industrial production out above 10 and that was when a year-over-year -year base comparison was the pandemic so we're talking about expectations pretty lofty here tonight if we get out above there on this data beat it could be something that starts to push those fears behind uh in, in the rear view mirror or at least get the start of it and and i noted in the morning express you had the economist magazine cover page was peak China. So you start to get some of this stuff. I mean, just, just February, I, I talked about just February this year, people talking about, about uh, AI eating al Alphabet or Google's lunch. Alphabet's been up 24% since then. Talk about the dollar. The U.S. dollar was the cover of the of Barron's back in October. That was the peak of the dollar. So this could be a contraindicator indicator here. See what happens out of China tonight. If we start to see better data, then we could start to see a turn in some of the metals, some of the commodities, and just risk sentiment in general. I think it would boost the equity markets as well. Uh, really, really got to focus on here. It's, again, the industrial production. Fixed asset investment is, is a very big one we like to see. Obviously, there's retail sales and unemployment as well. So watch this data as a whole, but industrial production is going to be the leader here. Crude oil may know something, but you know who knows? Maybe it's just response off $70 right now. But crude oil is trading higher. Get a nice response off that poor finish to last week. Uh, we have all the levels highlighted on the Morning Express. So that's going to be big for that data tonight out of China. But then you shift gears. You go into the U.S. Uh, US inventory data as well tomorrow. That's going to start trickling in expectations 
valuation wise and then leads into that API number before Wednesday's EIA data. Uh, and then really, again, the metals, which were bludgeoned on Thursday because of uh, all the data that came out Wednesday night into Thursday morning from China. Um, you got gold, though, hanging very, very well, holding out above 2,000, did not break 2,000 last week, or right back into where we came into last week, right in the mid-20s or low 20s or so. And, and silver has a lot of work to do. We need to see silver get back above 2475 in order to start just – just, just repairing some of that damage. Uh, same thing with copper. You need copper to get back above 378 in order to start repairing some of that damage. Nice, you know, nice rebound. But is this a dead cat balance and a consolidation? And some of these metals ahead of China data tonight, we'll have to see. And our team is here to help. So don't hesitate to reach out. 312-278-0500. Remember, futures trading involves substantial risk of loss. And it's not suitable for all investors.